Welcome or welcome back to our channel, Living on the Ohio River. Hi, I'm Kara Hinshaw from Key Associates Signature Realty. And I love to do these videos of work, living, and playing here in Southern Indiana, Northern Kentucky. So if you're new to our channel, tap that subscribe button. We wouldn't want you to miss a video because we do them every week, at least once a week. So, me, Kara, today, where am I at? Where's Waldo? <laughs> um, I am actually going to do a video more on the market today, but we are going to do a drive through Dubois County, uh, which is like Jasper, Ferdinand, Honeyburg, Dubois, those towns uh, that are in the Southern Indiana area. So stay tuned. We are going to talk about the four reasons why sellers aren't selling in this market. So let's go take a ride and have a nice view of the countryside and the small towns and let's hear why sellers are getting frustrated and what they knew need to look at in getting their home sold. Okay, we are going to head, like I said, into Dubois County. I'm gonna take you through Ferdinand first, a small town here, a few thousand, not, not too big, but a very charming town. And they're doing road work, so I apologize. It's a little uh, crazy in regards to what it looks like right now, but at least you get a feel. And then we will head uh, down Indiana, Indiana St State 60, highway, not highway, Interstate 64, and then up through Honeyburg and into Jasper. So you can get a feel of towns, countryside, interstate, all that good stuff. So what are we gonna talk about today? And it's why homes are not selling. Uh, obviously the market is shifting a little bit and I'm doing more of these videos, like I said, and just wanna kinda cover um, why homes, if you're a seller, are not selling in this market. It's very important to listen up because when things are changing, it's more important than ever to listen to your real estate agent. So I'm going to go through the number one reason because I'm hearing um, and why I'm talking about this topic is sellers, you're frustrated. You hear that the market is on fire. Houses are selling in hours. Um, you have... Um, you know your neighbor sold and you know it got this great price maybe five or six months ago and your house is sitting and you're getting frustrated realtors are getting fired uh, because realtors had uh, uh, clients have expectations that they should be getting this from just history of watching neighbors again as well as news and just hearing about what the market's all about so I'm gonna go through the four reasons and uh, my very 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 first reason and the most important reason right now is price. If you are not selling in this market, it is 100% in my opinion, uh, I shouldn't say 100, but a very big likely chance that you're priced too high. And again, like I said, you, four or five months ago, your neighbor may have sold, got this great price, and 100% you're like, well, why can't I get that price? My home's been sitting 30 days. I haven't received any offers. They had multiple offers. Uh, a bidding war on their home, you know, what is different? Well, the market is shifting, guys. And um, as you look, and uh, I actually pulled up statistics of the inventory versus sold homes, and I did this with the Indiana Regional MLS, and by the way, we're this downtown furnace, so as you can see why we're driving, driving through. But what it did tell me is um, you know, I don't, we're not anywhere near like inventory of 2008, anywhere like that. But I did go back and look at like 2019, which is really a lot of the pre pandemic area. And I feel like we're kind of heading a little bit more, you know, near that direction. It wasn't bad. We are still in a seller's market. Don't get me wrong, but we are definitely climbing over a month. We're at, at roughly when I looked at the Indiana original MLS which is the biggest MLS in Indiana. So I am pulling a huge area. Uh, the only thing it really does not include in Indiana majority wise is, uh, I'm gonna go down here and turn around so you guys can see, because we're, uh, is not that big. <laughs> um, but it, it basically covers all of, you know, most of Southern Indiana, except over by the east side uh, near Louisville, they're in their own pocket of MLS. It does not, cover my board which is Indianapolis but it does cover a lot of counties all around 
uh, the north, Fort Wayne, all that area, southern Indiana. So it is the biggest pulse that I felt like I should pull. So we're actually driving through, just so you guys can see uh, as I drive through. This is one of the new subdivisions here in uh, Ferdinand, if you're looking new construction, just to kind of give you a feel why we're driving. And then we'll turn back and go through and show you some of the older homes, because this is an older town, and then head onto the interstate. So the inventory, let's go back to what I was talking about. Um, the, the, the inventory is climbed to about one and a half months. That's what we're at, or I shouldn't say the inventory. Um, the amount of uh, time it would sell, what we have currently on the market versus what's sold in the last 30 days. So I looked at what that is and it looks like it would take about a, a month and a half to sell the current inventory listed in this area uh, or a majority of Indiana, I should say. And sorry, I got construction here. Let me turn around and get out of here before I, I uh, keep talking here. But what it shows, and, and look at the chart, because I did include it here, is, hold on, <laughs> while I get through the concrete truck here. Let's see if he'll let me through. Okay. So what it, what it told me is, and I'll pop the chart up here while I'm talking, is that we are, we're not like falling tremendously, uh, or real low in inventory, I should say. We're very equal almost to the same inventory as we were about a year ago, maybe a little higher, obviously. But what it's showing me is the demand definitely has dropped off. Look at the bar of solds. It's, almost, it's the lowest it's been if I look back just to, from 2019 to now uh, in regards to increments of this chart, it is the lowest. So the demand is dropping off, the solds are less. So what that means is you gotta really understand your price. You gotta understand there are markets within markets, guys. So we have to understand your subdivision, your town, um, your area, uh, wherever you are, we got to look at the comps and really understand what is selling and what is not selling in those areas. So something to, to keep in mind, price is a huge driver um, because we still are in a seller's market. So if your home is on the market, it is not selling, not getting showings, whatever it may be, price is your first issue, most likely. Um, may not be the sole reason, but it is most likely one of the major reasons of why you're not selling because you are trying to price like a house that was five or six months ago. And the difference is, is buyers have options, guys. They don't have to go through a bidding war. They're not desperate. There are choices out there right now. So a buyer does not have to go crazy and, you know, compete against 40, 50, you know, bids, <laughs> like some crazy houses, not all, but some. Um, you know, it's not flying off in hours, so they have time to look. And so you got to consider that you are competing more now. It is, it is not that market even three or four months ago. So keep that in mind, talk to your realtor and make sure you really understand the actual market. So price, price is a big deal. Keep that in mind. Um, you need to need to know where to be in the market in regards to actually getting the home moved. So. Realtors that are experienced will definitely be able to help you through that. And then while we're talking, we are driving through Ferdinand still. And this is some of the older homes, which is really pretty. I uh, just wanted to give you a feel of different styles. There are new homes here. There are older homes here. So it just depends on what you like, but a very cute town and has a lot to offer here. So what we'll do now is we're gonna jump on back to the main drag and then we'll head um, towards the interstate. So price. Again, number one, and one that you should not ignore lightly. Um, if you don't want your home to sit, you'd better watch it three, four weeks in if it's listed and really be reviewing with your agent. Um, experienced agents will be able to really look at the market. They have a pulse on the market. They will be able to help you there. So the second thing that we are gonna talk about is, in my opinion, is condition. Um, one thing that I thought was very interesting over the last year and a half, and I was always baffled, is some of these homes that we're selling were in terrible shape. P 
people didn't have to do anything because the inventory was so low uh, that people were just buying houses that needed a lot of work. The condition was not there. In the past, if your house was in condition, was poor condition, it, it wasn't moving. You would have to do some things to it to get it to move. So, you know, if your house needs painted or whatever it may be, sit down with an experienced agent. They will understand the market and what things you can do. There's a lot of things you can do to a house that is not expensive to get your house in better condition. Painting is the cheapest way to get your home back into a little, you know, fresher feel uh, that's not so expensive. Um, obviously, you can get into like doing new kitchens and counters and all that, and that's gonna be a lot more expensive. But just look at your house with an agent, and most likely there's a lot of things you can do that will uh, bring the condition up um, without spending tons of money. Now, obviously, if you're willing to spend some money, it can't hurt because the competition is becoming uh, more relevant out there. And, you know, you can obviously look at what's on the market against your own house in the same price ranges, same towns, and you'll be able to see what you're competing with and maybe what you got to do to get your house moved. So don't expect to put your house, not getting it ready, not cleaning it up. I mean, cleaning goes a long way. <laughs> Just clean the house, mow your yard, get your landscaping in order. Uh, those are some simple, simple things that you can do to get the home ready and on the market. So uh, condition to me is one thing that's been very lacking um, in regards to sellers over the last year, year and a half. They were getting uh, just lucky, honestly, in my opinion. The market was so good that, you know, people didn't have to pay attention to all the little details of their house and they were, they were still moving. So that is not the case, in my opinion. Now, people are looking at age of roofs. People are looking at uh, age of heating and air more, you know, before they just, you know, needed a house. So they didn't really care about some of those things where they used to care a lot more and are starting to care again um, in regards to like your house. So that is something that people consider and, you know, you got to reflect that with your price again. If you have older stuff in your house, people are going to discount your house if, if they're going to have to replace it in a year. Uh, they're not going to just take it because they have to and you're not going to see the waving of inspections like you used to. Um, people don't have to do it. Uh, there's more competition so they're not going to wave. Um, I'm not saying they, they will but like I said there's still pockets. I think there's still competition if they're priced right certain price ranges especially that under 200 250 here you are going to see still some competition because what i'm finding is the houses that are sitting are definitely climbing in price um and are not moving as quickly but if they're in the right price point that still has that high demand you are going to see um that competition still and maybe of waiving inspections but i don't feel like it's there like it was um buyers are taking back <laughs> and uh, getting a little bit more power, not much, because like I said, it is still a seller's market. We are at one and a half months uh, that would take to sell all inventory that is sitting out there on the market. So still a seller's market, guys. Um, you know, a balanced market six months. So, you know, there's a, there's still a lot, of way, a lot of ways to go where we get into a balanced market. So buyers, it is freeing up for you consider that but sellers you still are in a good position so don't get me wrong you know about you losing tons of value or whatever it may be we just are changing a little bit and you got to understand that market so we are heading down Indiana 64 the interstate here this actually is the interstate that connects Evansville to Louisville so if you are looking at southern Indiana this is the main road that really follows the Ohio River and would connect those two areas. Uh, takes you about two hours if you drive them from one end to the other, um, but this is the main area. And it's actually a really pretty drive, um, especially as you get closer to Louisville. The interstate is actually a, a nice interstate to drive. So, and it's not a really busy interstate. Um, I feel like you can get on, like 65 is a mess <laughs> if you're going up towards Sydney or going south towards Nashville from Louisville. It's a very busy highway, whereas I feel like Indiana's uh, in Interstate 64 is not. So that's what we're on right now. And uh, just showing you where we're driving and you can get a feel again of just Southern Indiana and its feel. So back to the market condition. If you're getting your house on the market, 
listen to your realtor and do what you need to do to get everything on board and uh, get cl cleaned up, tidied up, painted, whatever we need, need to do. Get it market ready. It's critical. Don't ignore that fact anymore because, like I said, I just don't feel like the market is going to handle that, especially if we continue to have more inventory out there. It's just going to get worse. So get ahead of the game and uh, price it accordingly and get it in good shape. Okay, third. And none of this is anything crazy. Like this is your normal things that get houses sold. But I think that everybody's been so nuts over the last year now they forgot what it takes to sell a house. So I'm just going over the basics. So the third is location. Now this is an interesting point. Um, you know, location, you know, is always location, location, location will sell a house. Where in the last year and a half, that was a little different. And I'm gonna look at this from two angles. There's like one angle, let's say you had a house that was near a railroad track and you know, something that would make it a less desirable area. Uh, I don't know, whatever it may be, uh, that would cause someone to not really prefer that house and choose another house. Well, in this last year and a half, we didn't have as many options. So if you had a really nice house, maybe in a bad location, people would still buy it because they were desperate. They would take that and put it to the side and say, oh well, this is a great house as it is, not the location, but it'll work. So you do have a lot of that that was going on over the last year and a half with the locations, people giving up some of the things that might have been a higher priority and um, they laxed on. So I feel like, you know, your location uh, wasn't as important as it usually is when you're selling a house. So maybe if you have a house listed right now that is not in as desirable location, that could be getting uh, affected right now because as more buyers or more sellers come on with more inventory, uh, buyers have more options. So that is one angle of the location that I'm gonna talk about um, that I think was a little different typically for you know real estate you know, location has usually always been a very important item and I feel like laxed from the buyer standpoint over the last year and a half. Another thing on location that I feel is different and this may affect just areas, not necessarily all areas what I'm talking about, like all of Southern Indiana, but let's say, I don't know, I'm just gonna grab something. Let's just say someone really wanted Newburgh or Evansville, they wanted to live in the city and the, the prices were climbing, and typically maybe the values were higher in the cities than they were more in the country, for example, um, or smaller towns. Um, maybe just, I mean, not by tons, but maybe just a little bit of the affordability was there. What I saw happening over the last year and a half is a lot of people, because they could not find what they wanted, were traveling farther out farther out than where they were looking just to find a house. So someone that may have wanted, like I said, Evansville, Newburgh, was maybe going all the way into the country of, I don't know, Dale, Indiana, Tennyson, or uh, Elberfeld, I mean, just a little farther out in their areas that were more country because they could find the house they wanted, Linville. I mean, just small towns um, where I didn't see that in the past. I just thought it was interesting seeing how many people were traveling outside of their normal areas of looking to just find a house that worked for them for price as well as condition and just availability. Um, because it seemed like inventory dried up first in you know more popular areas. And then as that dried up, people started looking outside of the, the areas uh, that they really wanted and were giving up and sacrificing what they were willing, you know, where they were wanting to buy uh, by going out and going farther away than maybe where they worked or where they were wanting to live or maybe maybe even schools. I mean, you never know. They may have been one in the school system. They couldn't get in and finally just had to go out to a different school system. So a lot of things to consider for location. Like I said, there's twofold there. Again, it was condition of maybe just where the house is. And then the second is just people changing where they were looking because of inventory issues. Uh, so like location is gonna come back into to play here. Um, 
you know, maybe some of the towns that boomed a little bit that are smaller um, will slow down a little bit because some of those buyers that were in maybe the more highly populated areas, there's more coming up, so they have more options. Maybe they aren't willing to risk going a little farther out to find a home. So that is just a very critical thing to consider as well if you are a seller, uh, depending on where you are. Because again, like five months ago, the values may not be the same as they are right now. So keep that in mind, even a year ago. I mean, a year ago is a big difference compared to what a few months ago, so. So first we got price, second we got condition, third we got location, and those are always the three things that sell houses, right? Everybody knows that. Well, at least us realtors do but it is something that you hear a lot from realtors those three things affect sales uh, the fourth is what I'm gonna say is marketing and why am I talking about marketing I mean obviously a real estate agent they're supposed to market the house that's what they do that's their job well I'll be honest with you when you look at how many realtors are out there these days we are in the height of how easy it is to sell real estate or not right now we were and our numbers of agents have climbed and I don't know what the IRM list is I didn't really look at that because that's the state of Indiana but I mean you have thousands of agents right that's basically what I'm just saying and you know good and well that 10% you know definitely do a lot of the majority of that work of all those agents you got a lot of part-timers you got a lot of inexperienced people you got people that don't even sell a few homes a year so you know, obviously they probably shouldn't even be in real estate. But what I'm trying to say is, and especially experienced agents, is if you've only been in the market, let's just say a real estate agent, only been in the business for the last, I don't know, five years roughly, I don't know, something like that, they don't really know how to market the home. You know how easy it's been to sell houses as an agent, just by throwing it on the MLS, you got, you got bad pictures, you got cell phone pictures, dark pictures, uh, who knows a picture of a couch and not the room <laughs> I I'm just baffled when I look and see that these agents can sell houses now we are actually sorry going through this is the countryside isn't it beautiful this is Dubois County in the country you got farm ground um so I, I wanted to point that out but we are heading to Huntingburg so you will see that another small town in Dubois County uh, lots of little small towns but uh, very very uh, well kept and a lot of neat uh, history in all of them so check them all out if you are looking in this area so i going back to the marketing agents that have not really been in the market more than five years don't really know what it takes when the market does get into the more of a balanced market what it takes to actually find the buyers for those houses they're just used to throwing it up in the mls and oh boom it's gone in hours and we got a hundred you know 100 offers well, that's not going to be the case as we shift a little bit and especially if we shift into more of a balanced market the uh, you're gonna be needing to look for a agent that does know what they're doing uh, is a little bit more experienced or at least willing to learn even if they're not experienced on how to market the house you know first of all you know obviously good photography is a must in in the market with online and how much people look online um, but still, you need to showcase the house. That, that's the first step. You can't have bad pictures. But the second is just understanding where you need to advertise, where you get the eyeballs on these listings, um, making sure you have good video, making sure you have good photos, making sure that uh, you get the, those photos and videos in, in front of the right people. Like, hey, I'm on a video right now, you know, people that at least can give you visibility of areas and houses and and guide you um, to the right house for you and location or whatever it may be um, so marketing becomes a very big deal and experience being able to at least guide a seller through what they should be doing I mean honestly I have to giggle like some of the newer agents probably don't even know how to ask for a reduction in price <laughs> I'm sorry but you can't be afraid to tell your sellers and your clients what is really going on in this market. So if you're an agent or if you're a seller looking for an experienced agent, and this goes for the, the buyers as well, um, just make sure you understand who your agent is 
and you know what they stand for in marketing and when you're interviewing them what they're gonna do for you and make sure they're getting your house out there and make sure they understand the market and are able to tell you what what it's worth I mean someone that sells five houses a year and that's all they're doing it you probably shouldn't be in real estate if that's what they if they've been in it four or five years and that's what they're averaging um, they don't really have a pulse on that market they don't feel it changing they don't know uh, whereas someone that you do get experience they completely know and feel what's going on in the market they can guide you through it they can tell you hey don't stay here you know if you want this thing sold especially definitely because of your situation I mean you may need to get out of here or go somewhere or move and you don't have a year to get through it so um, just make sure you definitely get an experienced agent that knows marketing knows the market knows the pulse because it's very very important so I'm gonna stop here for a little bit because we are driving through Huntingburg now this is a cute little town too and I'm actually gonna try to see if I can drive you they have a, a street what they call Fourth Street and uh, there's the school which I you can't see it but that's our high school this is another small town just a few thousand people not huge not few but you know under 10 obviously all these towns are fairly small Jasper where we'll end up is the biggest population so that's uh, one that I would uh, consider the you know from a population actually it's an interesting town Jasper when we get into it is it's it's not a huge town but it definitely brings in the most influx because of the companies that reside there they have a lot of companies so their daily traffic you know can almost double just by the people coming in for work so it's it's not a, a normal town in regards to the influx of people in and out of it <coughs> so we're going into Huntingburg I'll tell you a little bit about Huntingburg and then we'll get back on our reasons for not selling right now if you're frustrated and wanting to fire your agent because again like I see it I we I am a real estate agent obviously you know that uh, I own a brokerage so I do see across all agents and frustration of sellers if they are frustrated just helping talk people through you know the changing times so we are actually on uh, US 231 that is this main drag right now and 231 will take you all the way up. actually if you take 231 all the way up you go to Lafayette Indiana I only know that because I went to Purdue <laughs> and it's actually a pretty drive it gets a little flat as you get more north because we are more rolling hills here so it has you know all your shopping gas stations all the stuff that you need but I am going to stop and kind of divert a little bit just to show you the cute four street they have a very good downtown uh, done a really good job of preserving it and uh, just it's worth doing a little turn down 4th Street for you to get a feel of it but you have a lot of older buildings down here we're coming towards it they have a great park here on the left that is um, they renovated it has music it's farmers markets really nice it's over here on the left but we're gonna take a left right here and I'm gonna to try to just kind of go down and then we'll divert around again to show you um, how cute 4th Street is. But they have uh, the brick streets and all the older buildings. It's like a storybook. I love it. I actually located an office here because I thought it was so cute when they were redoing everything. So isn't it cute? It's a storybook. Then over here on the left is your entry into their park. So, so cute. And they have a little uh, music over here in their little theater area. So, just giving you a feel of it. And then they have a lot of older homes here in uh, Huntingburg as well. So it's uh, a lot of options. And they have newer homes here too. So you can kind of see the homes as I drive through here. What I think I'll do is I'll go down to uh, down here and then I'll take a right and I'll actually drive you through, kind of just give you an idea of newer homes too. And then what we'll do is we'll head up to Jasper and show you Jasper. 
I could like drive all through Jasper because it's a much bigger town, but just kind of go in and show you the square and kind of what it looks like going in. Okay, so now we're gonna go up this hill and then we're gonna, actually I'll, I'll drive you through a newer construction. It's a Jago subdivision to give you a, a newer option if you're looking at new homes as well. But actually not very far away. I think I've been driving 30 minutes and we've gone through two towns now and we're only like maybe 10, 15 minutes from, from Jasper. And then I'll kind of show you that. And then I'll go back on the market in between while we're driving. So hopefully you like the combination of my market talks and my tours of just driving through towns. But it gives you a feel if you're looking in the area, for sure. Now we're gonna go into a Jago subdivision up here. And one good thing about Jago, if you are looking at Jago, is they, uh, they have a lot of subdivisions all over Southern Indiana and Northern Kentucky. So it's something that um, you can look at here. You can look at Evansville, Newburgh, uh, Louisville, Orangeburg, wherever you're looking, I'm sure we can find you a Jago option. So um, they build a, a very reasonable and a nice house. So if you are interested in that, call me on that one and I will definitely help you out. But I'm gonna just do a little quick whirl through here so you can see, and then we will head to Jasper. Now, if you're actually wondering like roughly where building costs are, I mean, I'm guesstimating this is probably without a lot, but you're talking about $185 a square foot right now in the area. Uh, that may not be everywhere, but it's a good average probably. If you're getting higher end stuff, that's probably your base spec. But if you're gonna get into, this is Hunter's Crossing. If you're gonna get into a real custom job, but you know, you're with, you know, nice stuff, but not the high, high, high end. So this gives you an idea of a, a Jago community. And like I said, I'm just gonna drive you through a little bit so you can see it. And then we will head to Jasper. So these are newer homes. What's great about Huntingburg is that you, have, you can try different things. So they are still building this one out, as you can see up there. And I'm not gonna drive up there, I'm gonna turn here, so we're gonna do a circle. But they're getting close. There's not a whole lot left. You guys want me to do videos on, so I always need ideas. If there's something specific you guys want, you let me know, I will get it for you. And it can be anywhere. Like I said, it can even be touristy if you want, I'll go show you. <laughs> Gives me a reason to go do it, right? Now we're heading back to 231 and I will um, head to Jasper. But Honeyburg is a great little town. So if you like small towns, definitely one to check out. Very walkable too, especially if you're near that 4th Street area. And this is the main area again. So that's, we kind of did, we kind of skipped some of the town going through just because I diverted through the area of uh, Hunter's Crossing. Okay, so now we are headed towards Jasper. And we're not very far. Huntingburg and Jasper are very close. A lot of people work in Jasper, so 
that's where we're headed. So why we, until we get to Jasper, I'll go back to kind of refreshing and summarizing a little bit about the market. So yes, there's a lot of news out there. Again, all markets are different, so it's not doom and gloom. Sellers, you still are in a seller's market. So just make sure you understand it. Make sure you have the right price. Make sure your house is in the right condition to come on the market. Don't just assume that you can anything will sell because it will not. Uh, and then the third, obviously, is location. Um, can't really do a whole lot about location. A little bit is, you know, your house is where it is. Uh, so that's probably the least amount of any change that you can do with regards to the four that I gave you. Um, but it is something that we have to consider. And then the fourth is, again, your marketing and your agent. Make sure you get someone that knows what they're doing. They're experienced um, or at least under an experienced uh, brokerage or agent that can guide them because it's so important as we shift that the agents are there to help guide um, people through what we're going to do. So they, they got to understand the pulse. They got to understand the pricing. They got to understand the markets within the markets. It is a critical thing to do. So you are selling make sure you look at all those items. If you are listed, well, and you're frustrated, I, you know, I can't help you except just make sure you sit down with your agent and, and if they're not helping you, then, you know, talk to another agent. That I, I don't, you know, know who's their situation and what they're in, but obviously, if you're not selling, you do need to review with your agent and you do need to understand why you're not selling. There's feedback there from all your showings and if you've had a lot of showings, then you should at least know that. If you're not getting showings, you're, you're definitely probably too high, just to guess. So you probably need to change your price. So I hope my market talk has helped. Like I said, I don't usually do a lot of market talks, but I hope you enjoy them. And if you want any other kind of market information, um, I can discuss whatever you may be interested in, doesn't matter. Uh, I love to do these driving and talks because it allows you to see the area, but also get some information on markets um, within markets because Indiana is not the same as California or Florida or wherever it may be. We're all a little different, um, you know, different demands and different things. So um, Southern Indiana obviously is affordable, always has been affordable. I still think it's affordable, uh, especially when you compare to California, Florida, wherever it may be. Um, you will definitely get the biggest bang for your bunk, bunk, <laughs> buck, I can't talk. Um, I feel like here in Southern Indiana and Northern Kentucky. Both of them are very, uh, both states have a good cost of living uh, for houses. So they're very, very affordable. And definitely in Evansville, Louisville, all of them, Lawrenceboro, wherever you're looking, I feel like the values are, are very reasonable compared to a lot of areas in the US and they're holding. So um, I don't feel like we're falling drastically in value. So don't worry about that buyers. So. We are coming into Jasper, so I'm gonna finish this video up and give you an idea of Jasper. I, I'm not gonna go through the whole town because um, it's gonna take a little longer and I don't want this video to drag on. But I will drive in, uh, take you to um, maybe the square and you can get a feel. And, um, and if you want any more, I have a lot of Jasper videos, so just click ahead. I think I have a subdivision tour and you know just things about Jasper that if you want to see a little bit more, and I'll probably do a separate driving tour one day on this specifically, uh, but just want to give you a feel. So, we are coming in. You got all your car dealerships here on the left. Buffalo Wings and Rings, if you like wings. That's a good place. And you got a lot of corporations here. Yeah, Kimball and all them up here on the left. You also have Jasper Engines, which will pass here on the right. So if you're looking for industry to work, and you want to be kind of a smaller town, Jasper's definitely one to consider. It ha or even commuting in from some of these smaller towns. It definitely has the jobs. So we are on 231 still. And again, like I said, these are all car, car dealerships mainly coming in. What we'll do is this kind of goes straight into the square. I'll pull in so you can kind of see the square a little bit and then uh, we'll probably end 
the video. But if you do want any information on anywhere in the Southern Indiana, Northern Kentucky, just make a comment below like I always say, and I will, uh, I'll get you that. They have a really cool um, square here in Jasper. And if you've never been to the Strassen Fest, you should check it out. It is a very fun fest. It's always in the fall. Uh, well, I shouldn't say fall. It's August. But it is uh, coming. And it's always a lot of people come from all over the place to, to visit it. It's a ger basically German. So if you like German, uh, German food and just a lot of old hist history that they'll bring out with it, the German history. So... Jasper engines here on the right. Again, you have companies, like I said. If you ever heard of Jasper engines, it's located here and headquartered here. We aren't going by the Schnitzelbank, but there is a sign up here. Um, that's a really good German restaurant here in Jasper, if you're visiting. getting into the little busier area. Another car dealership. <laughs> Jasper is a very well-maintained city. Everything's very manicured. Everybody's very proud. And when you are going, like you go through the houses, everything looks really nice. So you have your fast food like any town, um, like everything's coming up here, McDonald's, Shoney's, and you know, that kind of stuff. You got banks, free to bank. It's a good bank if you never need a bank local. But you have your amenities, you know, Big Lots, IGA, Rallies, it's all here, Papa John's, lots of fast food in this town. And they also have stuff that's not fast food that's more local as well. The actual hospital, I'm not going to go by it, but if you want to go up here on the left and take a right, it's very, very close. So if you are relocating for the hospital, it's right near here. You go down 56 and then take a right. But we're staying on 231. And then, uh, like I said, we'll end at the square and we'll end this video. And I hope that gives you a good feel of a drive through Dubois County and some of the towns it has to offer. Gives you a little bit of like, you get a little bit of the countryside, you get little small towns. Obviously this is a bigger town, <laughs> you can tell as we're driving through. Oh, and look how pretty it is, they're working on it, but look at that, that's the square up there. You can see the courthouse. It's pretty. And I spend a lot of time on the square because that's where the title companies are. <laughs> but I will loop around and then we'll finish up. I hope they let me go in there. It doesn't look like they're stopping us. That's where I'm going. So it's going to get a little bumpy, I have a feeling. Let me try to hug over here so it's not bumpy. They're working on something, it looks like. So here is the square. I'll just drive you around it. Try not to be bumpy. And there's Seabirds. They've been there forever. 1922. There are Jasper Utilities. So, cute square. And you got shopping and everything else. So... I hope you enjoyed this video of our drive tour through Dubuis County and 
just things to help out sellers. Um, if you need anything, I got your back. You can reach me at 812-686-3268. I'd always be there to help you. And until next time, I'll see you then.